Hey everyone, welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. I am Michael McCarvel and we're going to jump right into a kit build. Now if you have any questions about basic kit building, painting, gluing, um, the process, possible um, options of what you could do with some of the pieces, um, you really want to watch the uh, episode 29 where we go through the small uh, crossing tower. Uh, it's a simple kit build. But if you're new, it might be more beneficial. And then maybe come back and watch this one. So we're going to jump right in and start on the Walther's Cornerstone Kit. Uh, this is one that I had gotten a while ago and I'm kind of eager to build. Uh, it's an Art Deco Highway Underpass. It's one of the Walther's Cornerstone. This is an HO scale kit. Um, essentially, it's a bridge with... Um, vehicles and pedestrians moving back and forth. There's some pedestrian walkways on either side and it's kind of got some Art Deco styling to it which is going to be kind of cool. It'll it'll make it look as if it was more of an aged item. Even if we want to put diesel stuff across it, um, it'll work equally well in both eras. So let's get started. Okay so Let's take a look at what we have here. Brand new box, always nice. Okay, this is going to be a kit with no windows for a change. Um, looks like there's a couple of signs, vertical clearance, some highway numbers on here, some hashes for essentially for right along here, just to make sure that any drivers see. All right, our deco underpass instructions. Uh, looks like there's a fair amount of pieces, even though there is um, really not a lot of windows or anything like that. So, and two bridge sections, so that'll be fun. So we can actually do a little bit of concrete, a little bit of steel, some track, and uh, we'll definitely get a chance to do some weathering in here. So that'll be kind of cool. And there is a lot of pieces here. So this is a fairly big structure. There's some sidewalk pieces. Bridge pieces, bridge piers. Stuck together. Those are nice. I like the uh, <clears throat> I like the Art Deco stuff on here. So there is a lot of um, little punch outs that we'll have to clean up, so you want to make sure to take care of those. Uh, just make sure that the um, pieces are gone and the, they're filed down. That's essentially, they're there so that the mold, um, the plastic styrene flows through all the molds. So, and then there's a few on the ends. So, we'll go through, we're going to clean all of that up. And then we have the bridge pieces. So this is kind of neat. So several different um, girders on here, supports, so this is going to be a fun build. And then we've got the decks for the bridges as well. So two little pieces came off, so I want to make sure we don't lose those. So we got a lot of cleaning up to do on all these plastic pieces, so we're going to go ahead and clean all this stuff up, and then we'll, then we'll start taking a look at the uh, the instructions and get through the first set. So I'm going to be busy for a while. Okay, at this point we have all of the gray pieces cleaned up. Um, the instructions call for this to be a two track line. So there's going to be two girders that run across here. However, if you want to modify it and make it a single track, 
you can do so. They tell you what to cut out. They also talk about uh, triple track and then four tracks. You obviously need to get more of the kits in order to modify it, but they tell you how many pieces that you would need. So we're gonna just go ahead and build this as it's planned for a double track, but there are those options if you decide to. So at this point, what we've done is we've gotten everything ready to glue together. So this is essentially what it's gonna look like when it's done. And all I've really done at this point is test fit everything to make sure it, it is lined up correctly and we don't need to do any more sanding or anything like that. Um, I have noticed that the feet, they're a little tight, so I'm probably gonna sand some of these holes up open just a little bit more just so that we can get these sections down inside there. Um, and it shouldn't be noticeable because right now it's very difficult to get it through there. So maybe a little sanding. Um, but other than that, there's two halves to the sides. So there's four of these on each end. And then there's two halves to the front piece here that we're going to glue together. And then the back here, these two pieces form an angle. So we're going to glue those two pieces together. And then fit that in the back side of it. Um, once we're done, we've got the wings that go on the outside. And then we will make columns out of these three pieces and the corner of the wings. So there'll be a column that's built out of this corner, which will basically build out the corner of each of the wings. So we've got a bunch of these pieces to put together. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and glue together the, the face, the sides, and the back onto the sidewalk. And then we'll come back and do the wings, building columns out of these. Uh, once we're all done with this, we'll make sure everything is a good fit. And then if we need to do any additional sanding or uh, <clears throat> putty filling, uh, we'll do that as well. Okay, so... This is what it's gonna look like. This is half, we are halfway. <laughs> I decided to take a little break and do a little update. So um, pedestrians underneath here, cars here, and then another one of these uh, we're gonna assemble next. Um, you can see the walls are put on. Now, it looks to me like in the picture, the uh, wing walls are actually put uh, assembled but they're put on the wrong way. So what I did, I don't know if you can see it, but it's supposed to be flush. This 45 degree angle is supposed to join right here flush. In the picture, it looks like it's just at a single point. It doesn't have an entire side that it's, that it's meeting. You can see this, that actually mounts pretty well. The photo looks like on the cover it looks like it's it's flipped, so they don't they're not going to mount very well, and the instructions it's an exploded view, so you can't tell. So, but this is what we've got so far. We've got one of them. We're going to go build the other one, and then we'll take a look. All right. At this point, we have the two sides to the underpass completed, so we need to build the girder bridge that's going to run between these two. So we're going to paint these afterwards. Uh, we're going to weather them after that. So that's the reason why we're not going to leave them in the original molded plastic, although we could if we chose to. It would certainly speed things up. It would eliminate that painting step. Um, and again, the girder, I mean, you know, they're molded in a plastic that's intended that if you wanted to, you could leave it in this color because it does look a fairly realistic, 
just molded in that plastic. You know, it's not molded in orange or bright blue or anything. So um, what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and remove the pieces from these two sprues and we're going to clean them up, uh, cut them out, file them, make sure they're nice and clean, and then we'll start working on the assembly steps. So we're on the last page of the instructions and we have basically these steps here to assemble the side pieces. There's a lot of trim pieces and there's little side supports and things. So there's still quite a few pieces that we have to do. But at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and build this assembly. And at that point, we'll have the concrete pieces and the steel pieces ready to be painted. And then do we'll do some weathering and some detailing. So let's go ahead and get started cleaning these up. All right, here we go. At this point, we are at the point where um, I've given everything a shot of primer on the two abutments. And I've also gone back and done some sanding after I've sprayed it with primer. And then I've added a little bit of uh, uh, white squadron shops putty onto here. A um, few spots that needed to be uh, retouched a little bit that I missed as far as sanding. Uh, that's a good reason to give it a shot of primer um, because it does allow you to retouch a few spots that all of a sudden become apparent um, that need to be sanded, uh, especially hiding glue joints. Uh, that's really the biggest piece. So other than the two abutments, uh, we've got the pieces of the girder bridge. And you can see that there's a, a girder. It's going to get glued onto this side. There's a center one that's different than the others. There's a few flat spots here that are where the girders are going to glue on both sides. On the outside, it's all, um, there's no bare spots like right here. It's all raised. Uh, girder pieces because there's a few flat spots here that the um, that the truss piece needs to glue flat onto the track pieces these are basically ties with um, tie plates running down here so they suggest that you use this and remove the ties from the rail that you're going to put on here. So I would use a longer piece of rail, like for example, a piece of flex track to sit across here and then remove the ties off the off of the center piece of the flex track and then glue with ACC super glue the rail directly onto these tie plates. So um, this piece of uh, girder bridge is going to take a little bit more work um, these pieces right here are just going to be basically concrete with a, maybe a little bit of rust from the girders down across here uh, this bridge has uh, girders on it that are vertical these pieces that you'll be able to see from underneath and a little bit on like these braces from above and then you've got this these are actually ties, so they're going to be, um, we want to match this up with the color of the ties that we're going to use as much as possible. And then you've got tie plates that run down here, so those are metal, so we're going to want to give those a little bit more of a black faded look with um, a little bit of rust, but not the ties in general. Then there's the edge board. And you'll see that there's bolt heads that run down through here. So you're going to want to touch those up with a little bit of rust too. Uh, that being said, some of the paint on these girder pieces, we're probably going to use some chipping and get some of that, um, that original paint off so that what, what we see is the effect of paint chipping off and a little bit of rust. Um, 
coming through. So, so the uh, side pieces have some bare spots for these uh, these supports here to attach to. The middle piece has bare spots on both sides, so you want to make sure that you identify the middle piece. Uh, this is an end piece, and you can see it's raised. All, all these vertical members are raised. So this actually goes over here. And you can see this piece has a bare spot here for one of these supports to glue onto. So you want to make sure you identify this piece, because there's only one of these that goes down the center. And the other ones have little bare spots. So just be aware of that. You could, it, It's not real clear in the instructions but they do mention it so anyway let's go ahead and uh, finish sanding the uh, putty that we've put on the abutments and then shoot those one more time with some primer and then we're going to start working on painting all of this which is going to take a little bit more time So at this point, the bridge has been assembled. The bridge has been painted a, a undercoat of Model Master's flat rust, but we have not attached the railroad tie sections. Uh, these are going to be a different color completely. We want this to look like wood ties, so we're going to skip adding that right now. We'll come back and add that later. So the next step is to get some good rust flaking effects on here. So we're going to use a combination of the salt technique where you essentially wet the surface, put salt grains down, let it dry completely, paint over it, and then scrape off the uh, salt grains revealing just the rust color that you can see here. Um, we're also going to do a little bit of uh, rust colored painting afterwards so because we're going to want to get some streaking especially underneath the bridge so at this point we're going to apply the salt grains let it all dry and then apply our coat of flat black okay at this point we've got the outside panel um, I didn't paint the rest of the structure I wanted to see how the coat of hairspray was working out. So um, I basically covered the rest of this as I spray painted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the salt crystals that are along this panel. And you'll notice I concentrated more at the bottom. We'll see how that works out. And we're going to just essentially rub it with our finger, toothbrush, we can use a paintbrush, we can use toothpick, exacto knife, whatever it takes to get this stuff off. So That stuff is painted on, so it's going to take a little work to get some of this stuff to be removed. Some of the salt crystals were, looks like they may have dissolved a little bit. Again, this is just kind of a trial and error just to see what you can do as far as getting your skill set. Uh, weathering is definitely an art. 
So you notice that I've got some pock, little pock marks right here. And then along the bottom, there's a lot more wear. So let me clean all this up and then we'll take a look at it. After the salt is completely removed, you can see that there's some little pock marks on the side. And that's kind of what we are going for. Uh, we've got some paint chipping along the bottom of the girder bridge, which I like. Now, if you feel like you've chipped off too much, all we've done is added flat black. So you can, if you decide you want to add a little bit of flat black in here, you can certainly do that. Uh, we still have some more weathering to do. So I'm going to wait and see what that makes it look like when we're done. The hairspray effect is pretty obvious in these couple of pictures on the sides of the girder bridge where a lot of the paint flaking has taken place. Uh, you can also see some of the effects of the salt too in little spots where that come off. Uh, salt was added to the ends so you see a few effects of that. The salt had an effect on the interior paint and where it wasn't completely worn off it also had kind of a, a shading, a weathering effect. I was also pretty aggressive with the underside of the bridge as well. Um, you can see where the flaking took effect and sometimes it was just the edges that were worn. Whether it was going to be seen or not, uh, the girder bridge got a pretty good dose of weathering. All right, now it's time to start some construction. Um, there is one last thing I want to do besides just kind of a light weathering on the concrete. There's some recesses here that give it this Art Deco look besides the columns. So I want to fill some of these in. So I've already started with the top four on this one. I'm going to fill these in, see how it looks, see how I like it. And the... Um, rest of this needs to get mounted to a surface. So Home Depot sells these one inch thick pink foam squares which would be great for something like this. It's a small scene. I can build it. I can integrate it into a layout as I have time. So there's plenty of room on there for not just the bridge, but I can also put a string of buildings across the front, across the back. I got a lot of options. So the centerpiece is going to be the girder bridge. So I'm going to finish filling in these spots with, uh, I used a India ink solution. It's essentially about one to 10 parts India ink to water. So the best thing to do is not to let it run. So you, if you're careful, you can just fill that void with India ink and leave it flat, let it dry, because it will run like crazy. It's just water. And then um, I'm going to do all those, do the ends, and then we'll see how I feel if I want to do any of the bigger ones. I may I may hold off on that. So that's where we're headed. So let's get painting. Okay, real quick, just get everybody caught up. The abutments are done. The recesses, the black recesses, those are all painted. The ones I decided to do initially, I painted. The ones I wasn't sure about, I skipped. So the back side here um, that is been painted even though I'm not sure if I'm even going to see it and then the other three the other two sides so all three of these sides of these posts are painted on all four posts on both abutments um, I decided to go with these two paint these but not the columns and not the centerpiece I didn't really feel it was going to add a lot so I decided not to paint it. I can always go back and paint if I want to. I seriously doubt that's ever going to happen. So, because I, I like the way they look. 
I like the way I think that might have just been a little too much with every, all of this stuff black. But if you decide you want to, go for it. Um, and as far as weathering, other than the gray that's on here, um, I did shoot it with a, just a little, very, very minimal quick shot of a yellowish color that I use in um, military models. So I did do that. It brought the warmth up a little bit. It faded the gray a little bit, and it just kind of made it less cold of a gray. So I know you can't really see it in the pictures, but just so you know, that's what I did. And then one second quick shot from the um, from the top here, so that it hit these surfaces, the top surfaces, and it also hit the um, the sidewalk that's exposed too. So it just kind of warmed it up a little bit, just made it look better. So, so those are done. Uh, our garter bridge piece, completely weathered. Um, we saw those in the earlier pictures. So the last piece is going to be the track. So the track piece that goes on top of the garter bridge, like so. Uh, those are those have both been painted a very dark brown um, and I'm going to probably weather those again with a solution of uh, maybe a lighter shade of a wash um, just to give them some wear and also kind of take down the, the the satin appearance of them too and then I'll probably hit some of these tie plates that run up and down here with just a quick brushing of some um, like a, a, a rust I'll probably dry brush those so it just hits the tops. So, so once we get this installed, then we've got a paint matching color for the ties that are on here. And you can see I've already cut this out. So the ties are missing in the center here, which corresponds to this tie piece. So we're going to have to glue the rails down onto uh, this track piece. And I'm just going to use um, super glue, just ACC cement, and we'll just see how that works. If I have to go back and do something else, like even track spikes into the plastic or something, that'll be kind of tricky, but um, I may do that. I'm going to just go with super glue at this point. And uh, we'll just see how that goes. So other than painting this and mounting the three pieces onto a piece of styrofoam, uh, we're essentially done. So we'll finish those steps up, and then we'll take a look where we sit. After moving the pieces around a lot, I decided on a kind of a angled approach so I get a little bit more visual interest, decided where I wanted the track to be, and then put the bridge scene in place. So once I got that set up, drew some lines, and then decided to start cutting some foam. All right, so we've got everything lined up. We've got the foam cut two layers high. Going to add a little bit of roadbed here to bring the height up correctly, but other than that, um, that's where the bridge is going to sit. Okay, so that should be good. I'm going to get the pieces out of the way. And we're going to glue some of this on with some spray foam. Trying not to get it all over my trains on the shelf. this down. The foam's going to expand so I may not have to use too much
and they have to use too much spacers at all. If you ever figure out what you can't figure out what to do with some old computer hard drives, now they make really good weights. All right, we're gonna let that set up. Make sure the lines are correct. And then we'll glue the other three pieces on as well. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna have to add any spacers at all. This looks like this will probably end up being about right. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this up and then we will check the spacing on it. Okay, at this point we've got two pieces sandwiched together, um, basically cut out of other sheets of pink foam. These are all sandwiched together with a um, glue uh, spray foam and you can see that it's trying to pull it up and it really doesn't come up. I could probably force it up if I want to but we're not going to do that. So I went for a little bit of an offset view so that the bridge doesn't appear to be just running parallel to the edge so it gives it a little bit more um, change. I think in the future what we'll do is go ahead and add some structures and that type of thing but for right now I just wanted to get the the bridge onto something so and the height looks pretty good I think a layer of cork road bed on top here will match things up pretty nicely I just test fit a little bit but uh, one thing to mention is as you spray the foam on it will expand so you have to plan for that that being said, I weighted this down heavily with about 50 pounds worth of uh, metal and uh, file chests, so it wouldn't expand that much. But I did account for probably less than half an inch of expansion, but at least a quarter of an inch. So anyway, these are going to get glued on to match. And then we'll do some scenery here in the future. But other than that, I just wanted to show you kind of what it's going to look like while it's on here. And then in the future plans, I may cover in a, another video. But essentially, there's a lot of space right in here. So the road will continue through. The sidewalks are going to continue out. And then I was kind of planning to put uh, buildings here. But I want to make sure I don't block the view of the bridge. So for now, the bridge is going to essentially sit um, where it's at and then perhaps a, a building or two along this side. And then um, I don't have a ton of space over here, so I may turn the road to head straight into the edge of the, of the uh, diorama. And that might give me another room for another building or two there. So but other than that... Um, I'm really happy with the kit. There was very little flashing. Um, the cleanup really didn't take that long. And um, I do like the effects of the concrete. And I especially like the effects of the chipping and peeling on the bridge. I think it looks awesome. Okay, a couple of quick tips. Um, toothpicks, they um, drive those into the uh, layer of foam that you're working with and then the layer of foam that's going into that'll help it from moving around and then when you put a weight down on it it'll stay um, also the foam that I was using for that is uh, Loctite tight foam this is the brand um, it's made by Henkel Corporation made in Estonia the finest in Estonia foam is used on this video. Um, also, 
as I was working through the India ink uh, uh, weathering piece that I ended up switching to paint, but I was using little caps, <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, out of the recycle bin. And rather than throwing these away, these are a great little thing to mix stuff in. And sometimes you don't make the connection, but rather than throwing stuff away, I hate throwing stuff away. If I can use it the second time, that's great. And this is a good example. So between soda and my son's Gatorade, I've got half a cup of these now. I'm going to be using these forever. And this is just after a week or two of in the recycle bin. So lots of other tips and stuff out there, but that's mine. So um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, I didn't intend for this video to get quite this long. So we're going to um, revisit this diorama in the future. We've got buildings to put on it. We've got streets to build, sidewalks to build. We've got scenery. Uh, we can talk about ballasting. So we're going to use this for a lot and we're going to use it for uh, photos. And I'd like to do a segment just on photography for model railroads. But anyway, that's it for this episode. I appreciate everybody watching. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your sub, uh, when you go and you hit my YouTube channel and you subscribe. Please make sure you hit the bell icon because that will make sure that you get updates. So once again, I'm Michael McCarville. This is episode 30 for Fun with Fallen Flags. And we will look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Take care.